Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andy and this is a very special episode of UFOs and other paranormal stuff. That's right ladies and gentlemen, this episode marks a first for this podcast. Today we join up with the wonderful Deborah Hatswell of the BBR, Being Believed Research. And we have a blooming good talk about all things paranormal. Deborah is a paranormal investigator and you can find links to the BBR all over the place on Twitter and Facebook. But you can find lots more information about what the BBR and Deborah Hatswell do on their website. You will find the link to their website in the episode description for this podcast today so head over there have a look and see well see loads of stuff there is lots to have a look at there's an interactive map of bbr cases uh there's reports there's also links to the case files done by the bbr on youtube as well you can find all of the bbr's uh, podcasts wherever you get your podcasts from But before you go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen, have a listen to this episode, and I hope that you enjoy listening to it just as much as Deborah and I enjoyed making it for you. So without further ado, here is our little chat about the paranormal. Well, I remember how I met you. I actually met you through a witness, believe it or not. Um, A lady that we both know well, she lost her purse in the town where I lived and to trace her um I went on Facebook actually looking for her and she got in touch and she told me herself about an experience that she'd had when she was a child um and that's how you got to know each other isn't it yeah that's right it is hey Mm. and then I had a witness from Buxton who went out to film with the tv crew um and you yeah you remember you asked me what they were doing and I said that he'd been followed one night down the train track by what he believed to be a Black Panther um, that actually sat and stared at him for quite a long number of minutes. And you said that you used to work on the railway and you, you understood that quite well. And that you'd That's seen right. a railway ghost, which absolutely intrigued me. Do you mind telling me a bit about that? No, I don't mind at all. It was um, it was at East Croydon Station, a place I'd worked. I think I'd been there for about six years by this point. And there was nothing weird well there was loads of weird things that used to happen there but nothing um paranormal shall we say up Mm. to that point um that's what made it even more stranger and what happened was it was the middle of the day i'll give a bit of context east croydon station is it's a three platform station it's got uh, well three island platforms yeah platform one and two platform uh, three and four sorry excuse me and platform five and six And I was standing in the middle of platform three and four, right by the new bridge that they've got there. If you're Mm -hmm. able to check it out on Google Maps, you'll see the new bridge and everything. And just to help people on their way, you know, tell them where to go over the new bridge. And and uh, there was a few people who come to me, as usual, asking what train they need to get on. And I'd direct them on their way. But this old man, he looked Japanese to me. But he looked so very old. I wondered, I mean, I was looking around, seeing if I could see his, his carers yeah. or relatives, because he looked he looked over 90. Right. And I thought it's very odd to see people that age without somebody with them. Yeah, yeah. And he came to me and he was saying something to me. But it was whispering. I couldn't hear him at all. It was a quiet day at the station. I couldn't hear this bloke at all. So then he, he showed me a piece of paper and it had Horsham written on it. Horsham's a station down on the way to Southampton, I think it is. So I said, okay. He obviously couldn't, well, might not have been able to understand my English. Yeah. So I had to tell him where to go, but I had to sort of point, go upstairs across yeah. to the platform Dialogue. drive. The train had been there in about 10 minutes. But I felt so worried for this bloke that I decided to contact the person who was standing in the middle of the platform on platform five and six and one and two as well. 
uh, called them by radio and I said, see this bloke here, you need to just keep an eye on him because he's very old. He might get a bit lost. You know, he wants the, I think it's the 21 past Horsham train. I can still remember the timetables now. That was years ago. And I said, yeah, they said, yeah, we'll keep an eye on him. So, okay, off he went. He went into the lift. And that was the last I saw of him. About a few minutes later, the person on platform five and six said to me, where is this bloke? Yeah. I haven't seen him. He hasn't come down. Um, so I thought, okay, don't. I better call the person over on platform one and two as well. Yeah, Casey's got confused. And got the That's right. Because it's a funny little setting. You go in the lift one way, and to come out the lift, you've got to yeah. go out the side door. Yeah, it's a similar so, station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's very confusing. And um, so they'd never seen him either. Right. And I thought, right, I've got to put out a call to the rest of the station, including the gate line upstairs. They didn't see him, and they were on the gates all the time. They didn't see him coming out. No one at the other end of the platforms, the stairs come off the bridge, and they go down to the other end of the platforms. They could, they'd they never seen him. So I'm thinking, where's this bloke gone? This is a missing person now, and I'm the last person to speak to him. Yeah. So there's one more place that he might have gone to, because one of the lifts, only one of the three lifts, goes right down to the old basement. Right. But you need a special key for that. Yeah. Or you need somebody who's in the basement to uh, press the button to get it to call down. So I told a colleague to go down there and have a look. No one there. And that's that's got a locked gate, so they couldn't have got out. No. So I'm thinking no. this, is, this is getting a bit weird. We've got to call management in now. Yeah, because what if he stumbled uh, on the track or, you know, he's wandered right. off he's further down the track, yeah. And he could have gone anywhere. Mm -hmm. So manager came to me. Uh, I'd said basically everything I'd said to you now. Mm. And she said, right, we'll have to put an all stations report out just in case this bloke's yeah. gone to anywhere. Yeah. And for that day, that was all we could do about it. Although I was wandering around like this, looking to see if I could see the bloke. I was looking for him for days after. Right. And she comes back to me uh, a couple of days later, I think it was about a week later. And she says, we put an all stations report out. And no one's got back to us. There, there are something like 230 stations. All the stations that have got people there, no one saw anything. No. All the train guards, no one saw him. All the unmanned stations, uh, no CCTV has reported anything. And I said, okay, what about the CCTV here? Yeah. And she said, well, that's the weird thing that I needed to tell you about because the lift, even though it was new, the CCTV wasn't working inside right. the lift and apparently the cctv that looks directly at the lift door wasn't working either oh. but that one had only just stopped working at the very time that apparently the bloke had got into it which i thought was interesting yeah but the the new bridge has got cctv cameras looking at it from both ends I think from basically all over, it's got more cameras than the Big Brother house. Yeah, definitely. And they said they couldn't see a thing. Couldn't see, <sighs> couldn't see anything. Nobody came out of that lift. So where he's gone, I don't know. I mean, yeah. he looked out of place anyway. He looked mm. very out of place to me, but he's he's, he's gone. And I mean, for I, people I, listening in other countries, you can't move yeah. in the UK without being on a camera. No, I think it's right. camera it's, everywhere. It's, they're everywhere, aren't they? And station, yeah. you get a lot of train dodgers who won't pay the fare. So there is quite it's quite hard to get in and out of a station unseen, right. you know. Right. And what is his story? Can you imagine someone out there knows no. his story, you know, and why he was there that day? And wow. I'd, I'd love to and know. the fact he felt he still felt his energy for a number of days is really interesting as well to me. I did. I wondered if he was, I don't know, hiding around behind one of the coffee huts or in, in the waiting room. I was looking at everyone, making sure they weren't him or, you know, yeah. I was looking everywhere. I, I mean, I knew the station inside out and, you know, all the little cubby holes and I was looking everywhere. Couldn't find him. I didn't know where he'd gone. It was really, 
sort of strange. And that was the weirdest thing that had happened at that place. Mm. Well, apart from some of the drunk customers, but we won't talk about them. <laughs> you get you a few. Said that, you said something that I hadn't resonated with me. You said, obviously, there's lots of people that have died on the railway, A, making mm. the railway you know, in, yeah. in, in disasters and things and people who've taken their own lives. And I never, never really, I thought, oh, I never thought about it that way. It is yeah. just building that maybe holds all of this resonance, you know, um, and you be. tuned in. Maybe you, maybe you're the only person that day that could see him. It could well be. Why? Well what be. Was, you know, what was his message? Why was he going to Horsham? Oh, I'd love to know. Mm, yeah. I'd love to know. I mean, Horsham's a lovely place, but uh, it, I don't know. It just seemed weird or really odd. It That's is really odd. Most yeah. people I speak to have an experience that they can't explain. You know, they'll say they might not have had a cryptid That's experience, right. or a ghost experience, but there'll be something that's happened yeah. in life that they just cannot put the finger on and don't have an answer to it. And you sometimes you just have to accept that you might you just probably never going to know. I mean, you don't know. Yeah, so that's right. But, but more than likely, we'll never know what his what his story was. Unfortunately, oh, that's right. Man. I wish I did. I wish yeah. I did. Yeah, I, I'm the same as you. I, I um, I've done a few. I don't do a lot of paranormal work online. I tend to do that privately, and because yeah. the situations I work in is normally when the family's at the absolute end and they've tried everybody else, and you know they can't get anywhere. So yeah. I've worked with a lot of spirit and I've crossed a lot of spirit over and each of them have a reason for being here. That's you know, right. it might not be understandable to us at the time, but to them it's incredibly important and it's holding them here. Yeah, um, that's right, I've heard. And, it, and it could be like that for him, that, that station, that journey might have been incredibly special to him in some way. That's and right. Maybe he's just making it as he would and did back in his day when he was alive. You know? That's right. I was—I mean, I've racked my brains on it. How many times? And like I said, Horsham is on the way to, um, to the to the south coast. Horsham's actually on the way to uh, Southampton. Right. It's right. on the branch line that goes down to Southampton uh, for the southern services. So I'm wondering if maybe in his life, when he was alive, he was on his way, maybe to meet somebody in Horsham. Mm -hmm. And then go off down to Southampton, which would have been the international hub of, of well, of Britain in those days, or one yeah. of the big international hubs in those days. I would, I would follow your gut on that because obviously yeah. you've been able to connect to him. So to me, that's information. You know, that's right. for 20, you know, twenty twenty four, they'll tell us to explain that away. You that's know, right. physical thought, and it isn't. It isn't. We can pick up on other people's energy because we're energetic beings. That's you know? right, we are. It was and Einstein that said that energy doesn't disappear, it just transfers into something else. Exactly that. There you go. I've worked with I'm a few a... people who are passing over. Yeah. Normally, if they've had a bad event around that time, or if sometimes it's because they have something they haven't shared and they're worried that it's going to send them to a bad place, or a lot of the work I do is to say to them, you're just going to become another form of energy. You get to choose whatever you want to be as you pass. Right. You can come back as a sunlight. You can come back as a robin. It loves love and it transcends with that energy when you go, you know, and you can tap back into your loved ones and, and, and pay them a visit and things. And That's right. <laughs> it's the nicer side of things that I do that, especially when I've done some cases where they haven't known that they've passed, where they've been here just mm. going about their everyday Alive, feeling very frustrated, yeah. and then you explain to them that you actually passed in an accident. It went very fast, and you, and you pass, and then I ask for the loved ones come to come in, and we kind of pass them over that way. But all of that subject absolutely fascinates me. Um, Does me as well. When did it start for you, if you don't mind me asking? When that's the, not your experience, I wouldn't imagine. No, I think my first, my first weird in inverted commas experience happened i think it was about 1998 and um it's a bit of a japanese connection here as well right. um 1998 uh it was i was very young at the time we all were and we still are and um it was the first time that my mum and dad had gone away 
yeah. on holiday. And my brother as well. And I had the house to miss house. So I thought, <coughs> you know what? Yeah. I'm just going to do what I want. It's my day off. Do what I want. So I went, weirdly, I went and had a bath. I think I went and had a bath about two o'clock, strangely. My dad was adamant that, about security and safety for me because I was only, what, 19, 20 years old. He said that front door, back door's got to be locked when I'm in the house or out the house. Yeah. Uh, which I did. So I'm in the bath. And I could hear this noise from downstairs. We've been living in this house, uh, what, about 10 years, 11 years by then. And again, nothing strange had happened yeah. uh, till that point. And I could hear the middle, the middle door closing. It's a big door, mm-hmm. partly made of wood, but there's a big glass pane in it. And when it closed, you can hear you can hear it. And I'm thinking that door was wedged open. So the only way that it would close is if there's a big bit of wind that's coming from the back of the front door, yeah. which um, there couldn't have been because it was locked. Yeah. Or if somebody had kicked the wedge. Out of the way. I'm sitting there. Yeah, I'm sitting there thinking, it's a bit odd. It's strange. I thought nothing of it. Then I could hear a, a thud coming from what would have been behind my head, which would have been down at the bottom of the stairs. Mm. I was I was upstairs at the time, and I'm thinking there's somebody in the house. I'm 20 odd years old, somebody in the house, no one else is it, no mobile phones. I couldn't jump for a phone and call 999. Mm. And then I could hear another thud, and it sounded like it was coming up the stairs. Oh. And it didn't sound like the neighbours next door, no. even though their staircase was right next to our wall, because they were they were pensioners. And that you, would have really had to be. Yeah, you're used to their noises. You, you they'd have yeah. just been noises for you because you heard them every day. That's right. And I'm sitting there thinking, I'm getting a bit worried now because it sounds like there's somebody with really heavy boots on coming up the stairs. So I leaned behind me and reached into the into the cupboard that was behind me, and I pulled out my dad's old, uh, what do you call it, like loft door opening yeah. stick kind yeah. of thing. So I'm sitting there in the bath. I mean, it sounds funny now. I'm sitting there in the bath holding this wooden stick, ready to hit somebody who was about to come in, and I could hear him coming right up to the top step, which was only two or three feet behind where I was, and I was sitting there thinking that there's somebody about to come in. Right. I thought right. Wait a minute. Waited a few more minutes. Well, a few more moments. And I went out the door. And there's no one there. Oh. And I thought, what on earth is going on? And I thought, I can't tell my mum and dad this. But first I decided time. that... Sorry, go on. First time you're on your own and it all oh, goes yeah. paranormal. I better not tell my mum and dad. <laughs> the, my mum and dad were very, very religious, you see. Yeah, I and you know, they probably wouldn't have believed me. So I thought, but they um, they came back a couple of days later, and I, th- I thought to myself, I've got to tell them somebody's. Oh, there was something in the house which couldn't be seen but could be heard. And I said to me, Mum and Dad, I said, this, I could hear somebody right, walking upstairs right behind me. It was clear as anything. Not next door. Mm-hmm. Old people, like you said, we know the sounds of them. And I said, it sounded like a ghost. And I was expecting them to give me the look of ridicule. And my mum looked at me and said, and maybe it was the old person who used to live here. And I said, what do you mean by that? And he said, um, one of the people that used to live here, he said he killed himself uh, in, in the garage down the end of the garden there. And he said, uh, and she said, I've never heard that before. I said, I said to her, I've never heard that before. And she said, yeah, it's in the records. And she got some, I don't know, was it Dean? Yeah. or house records or something out and he killed himself right. in the garage because apparently he was in he was a prisoner of war in japan right in in the 19 uh, well in the world war Two. yeah and of course that had affected him so much so that he decided to end his life turned on the uh turned on the car engine and just sat in the garage for a couple of hours right. and he asphyxiated himself and that was almost 20 years to the day bef- uh, before my, um, well, before I started walking up the stairs behind me. Yeah, yeah. So, and you oh. up on that. I it wonder if those two events are connected in any way. I do wonder. That's a point. I never, do you know what? I never thought of that. Because I, I he's, thought of that, but yeah, he's I a Japanese 
person who's obviously from Japan and then you've got this no. gen. I mean, it's understandable. I know my granddad had an awful time in Burma, awful time. Really? It ruined him. The things that they had to see over there. There could have yeah. been a connection somewhere in, in some... I do wonder. But, yeah. I mean, as a, as a paranormal investigator, I'd be looking down that line now, you uh, know, and you kind of tie them together. <coughs> maybe, Sorry, excuse me. Maybe, um, Andy, if Oops. we could find his name, we could apply for his war record. You could do, they, do that. You can do it online through the government website. You just apply and it's free. Um, and, and they'll just tell you yes or no like where they served and things like that. I've just done it for my mum, actually, because she wants to know about her dad. So that might clue us into something. But for me, there seems to be, you know... Could be a connection there. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe. Or something down the line in your DNA, maybe. But you, it's you who's mm. clearly sensitive to this energy. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Mm. It was, uh, oh, that was very... That was weird. That was weird. And that was at a time, 1997, that was at a time when I was a complete non-believer, yeah. just like me, mum and dad, complete non-believer. Yeah. UFOs, ghosts, didn't believe in any of it. I couldn't even watch the X-Files because I thought that was just comedy. <laughs> now, completely changed now. I can't get enough of the X-Files now. He's but, answered. Uh, I've got the answer. I need to know what it was that I saw that day. I had... Right experiences when I was a little girl I've always had them it's always yeah. been in my bedroom and it's always terrified me it's frightened me and I'm 56 oh, now and I still experience it yeah. um, and I've never throughout life I never put those two incidents together they were very mm. very separate because everything stopped for me at about age seven or eight I'm, I'm, I think I managed yeah. to shut it down and nothing had happened at all and so to be 15 and that happened that day Right. Just suddenly confronted with something that looks like a monster. Um, for all I freaked out at the time, and I was no. terrified, and I was terrified for a good 20 years, I needed to know. I really no. needed to know what it was. I wanted to know, was he a time slip? You know, was it something paranormal? Was it something I did? Was he going to come no. back and get me? And that mm. got, that's what got me started on, on what I do, obviously speaking to other people. Um no. And I'm all about connections and patterns. So with you, instantly, it's like, well, this guy's served in Japan and this guy's a Japanese girl. She clearly picked up on yeah. that nationality. But That's yeah, right. fascinating. I I've don't not... think there's a link there. I would. I mean, I personally, I'm going to see if I can find... I've got a few um, researchers that work in... They've got access to newspaper articles, things that I don't have access to that you have to pay for. But because no. of obviously do and i know a few genealogists as well who don't mind working on things um oh, right. you know they're interested in it so i'm in a mm. quite a, a good spot to be with that so i will have we'll have a chat offline and you tell me privately whereabouts the house was and stuff if, when you're ready and i'll right. reach out to a few people and see and maybe they can you know help with the, the mystery of the thing that, oh, that'd be interesting. I'd love to put the two pieces of that puzzle together if if they can go together, and I'm sure they can. Mm. It's like the lady we were talking about when me and you met. She oh. and together, what she mm. she described to me what she saw is like a sickly wolf looking thing. It had yellow eyes, and it was Lovely. on the golf course. And obviously, she said she was terrified of it. Really, really, sad. and that's understandable. And oh. she'd written it down in a diary. It yeah. has such a marked effect on her. She wrote it down in a journal. But even she, she went back to the golf course the next couple of days and actually asked the golfers, have you seen anything that looked like this? And I said to her, what's your earliest memory of, of an unexplained event? And she said, when I was little, every night when I went to bed, there'd be um, an invisible wolf in the corner of the bedroom and my dad would have to come in, clip a pretend lead on it and take it out and I couldn't go to sleep. And I cannot tell you how many witnesses I've heard that from. They're, they've had this hairy wolf in the bedroom that the, yeah. the parents had, have had to come in and remove. Yeah. And they suddenly have an interest in the paranormal or the cryptid subjects and did in search of answers, something that frightened them as a child. You can grow to a point where you need the answers more than the fear. That's right. And that's how that's you, what you do. Yeah, you cure fear by understanding it, don't you? You know, what it That's is right. that you're scared of. If yeah, I could practice, and he didn't do anything to scare me. He didn't put his arm out. He didn't growl at me. He didn't do mm. anything 
to elicit that fear, but he's just very presence was enough, you know, for me. Oh, yeah. And I was often scared. Yeah. Oh, it'd be horrible, horrible. Do you know what that um, you're saying there about uh, the father figure coming in and putting like a pretend lead on the thing? I've heard that before. I've heard that before. Not personally. I've heard that on other po- podcasts. Yeah. So that just goes to show you that this thing happens more than well, people more than we might think. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Really, does. I, I think spoke, spoke to sorry. so many. Spoke to a lady today, and she said yeah. a similar thing. But she didn't call him a wolf. She called it a dog. And she was out with her dog, walking a dog, and she'd had this experience. She said there was something within the tree line. I don't know what it was. I don't yeah. know. What it was. I didn't see it. But I just felt abject terror. You know, and I said to her the same, did you ever have any paranormal experiences as a kid? And she said, oh, this dog, we used to have this black dog that used to be at the bottom of the bed and it used to terrorise me. And I said, oh, I know what that's like. I've I've spoken to people before. I used to think they were the minority, but they're not. They're not. No, there's so many. There'd be people listening tonight who would like, oh, my, you know, that happened to me or something similar happened to me. You just don't know. There's loads of people out there and I'd love to hear their stories. Yeah, and I'd love um, to know. I'd, I'd love to know personally how many of them come from Suffolk, because there's a very famous. You, you more than likely you've heard about it. There's a very famous um, story of Black Shook. Yeah, the Black, Shook, Black Shook. Yeah, yeah. I've heard and, loads, uh, loads, and loads about that. There's a lot of reports in, Sus- uh, in uh, Sussex. I take them all the time. Um, that's right. Um, so that's why I plot them on a map, you know, so I don't lose them. Yeah. I know what's going on at one time. And it seems to be an area where the the, the land's very ancient, so you've still got some of your ancient yeah. forest there that we don't have in other parts of the UK. And whereabouts think, is that, sorry? No, it, sorry. Where, whereabouts was that, sorry? Is that is it Savernake? I always get the name of it wrong. Savernake um, Forest. It's got the biggest bellied oak in, in England. I'll look it up for you and I'll make sure I've got the, sure. right, the right place, yeah. Um, right. But I've worked, I've worked a lot of cases. You, you've got the Sussex puma down there as well, haven't you? So you can imagine how often that comes into me. Strange, that one. Yeah. strange deer heads found in the middle of a path. No body, just the head. Um, all strange. manner of, yeah, all manner of strange things. Um, right. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Um, <clears throat> he was me, a, I remember uh, speaking to a witness who was a Wiccan, and she said we were all out there and we were drumming. It was the solstice. No. She said, and we could hear something creeping up through the grass, and just mm. it was clearly watching it. We don't know what it was. It never rose onto two feet or anything like that. And she said, at the time, it almost had like a red sheen to its eyes, and that comes up I really see. often. It that red eyed thing that that, that yeah. people say. I wish I'd have, if I'd have had my map open, I'd have been better. I could have told you everything I had in Sussex. <laughs> Sussex is definitely it's definitely a place I'm gonna to have to look more into there. Yeah. Um well that's only what a little bit what, what ten miles south of where I'm living now, so it's not too far away. No, not at all. And there's the um Ash uh, is it Ashdown Forest. Ashdown Forest, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ashdown Forest as well. Um it's where, it's where Winnie the Pooh was written. Was it? I didn't know yeah. that. I didn't it's know that. Just, I'm just gonna grab me match. Give me one second. Yeah. I know Ashdown Forest because there's a gentleman that I've worked with a number of years and he had his first experience there when he was about five. Aye. He described it as almost like, the words he used was hairy fairy folk. Um, and I asked him why, and he said, well, that's what they looked like. They were really big mm. and hairy, but they flitted in and out of the trees. Um, he was playing a game with his brother, running around and playing. He was in there with his parents. And, right. and that's when he saw it. And he's uh, actually a cryptid investigator now because of that that experience right let me have a look what i got so i've got this one here something moved let me grab it it's at i have to move it just so i can see the name of the place black hill and so just just okay. to the, just to the southeast of ashdown forest um and it's Break, this came yeah. in on the yeah, 31st of July 2021. At the end of July, I had a bit of a strange experience when I was out with my partner. We went deer or animal watching um, in East Sussex. I take yeah. the eye binoculars with us and it makes it much easier to see the deer in the dim light. 
We were parked up in our usual spot and we'd been sitting there for a moment when we heard a loud gunshot and the noise of a peed off stag. Bearing <laughs> in mind its hunting and culling uh, had started. About 30 seconds after the gunshot and stag, some noises came um, and something stood at the back of the car and blocked <laughs> out what little light there was in the rear view mirror. It was as if something had moved behind the car and was big enough to block out all the light. Right. It was clearly a large but silent object. We heard no movement and it was almost like someone was walking behind the car silently. I instantly put all of the lights on and there was nothing out there, nothing to be seen. I checked and there was no other people or cars in the area. So we just got out of there pretty sharp. <laughs> I bet they did. I know, I bet they did. She does state that she felt the energy change, almost no. like an, an energy change. And she goes on, it's quite a, a long um, experience. But yeah, this I didn't know Winnie the Pooh was there. There's a Dogman report, he Grinstead. You've no. got two reports at Tunbridge Wells of a Bigfoot-like creature. And then if you head down, say you were going down to the coast, you've just got a band all along. That's right. the South Coast of really, really UFO reports, paranormal reports, cryptid reports. Um, wood. Yeah, exactly, all Cropping of that. Wood. Yeah. It's the right place. You're in a better place than me in the northwest of England if you want paranormal stuff. Oh, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> that's right, so I've heard. I've it's never had an experience with a ghost, what you would class as a, you know, like a typical ghost kind of thing. But... Uh. I think that's because when I was growing up, I always imagined ghosts to be like, you know, like, I don't know, like Victorian chains and, you know, the typical yeah. thing that you have in your head. Um, yeah. But I was once coming home with my friend. Uh, I lived in a, just a normal town, really. It was a, a mining village and it just got bigger as time went on. And it would have been, right. would have been 91, 92, something like that. And it was about half past one in the morning, but we, it was a walk we did quite often. Um, and we're walking up and they used to have these big, like three-storey Victorian homes and they were kind of rooming houses so you'd have different families on each floor and they'd share oh, the yeah. kitchen. And we'd done the walk so many times, never felt anything eerie or anything like that. And as we come over the bridge, something in my head said, don't look, don't look. All and right. as it said it, my friend went to look and I said it out loud again and I don't know why but I looked. And there was a. Didn't you? There was it's a. Like when someone says "Don't look down," your first thing you do is look down. Yeah, straight away. I think because I didn't want her to look at it. I went, "No, no, no, don't look!" And I looked, and it was a dead woman in the chair. Oh. And and we just carried on walking a few steps, but me me brain's processing at this point that all of the rooms blue, and she's blue, and the chair's blue, and some, it's just something not right there's something not yeah. right and I, I walk back and she's not there the room's completely different okay. but for that split second she was just like this in the chair and it's it was absolutely there. yeah absolutely terrifying and i just never <clears throat> you know i'm not I, I i was a bit of a scaredy cat back then when it came to stuff like that so it's just like i'm not going that way again i'm never walking up derby road again <laughs> in, in my don't life. Blame you. I don't think I ever did, but yeah, things like that happen for me more so than than um, actual like spirit that people see spirit. It just I don't know. Right. I think it's different for all of us, isn't it? I think so. Hey, yeah. I think so. I think many people have got a connection. Some people have got a more stronger connection than other people. And mm. um, I, th I think it's like um, Dr. Stephen Greer said about people who see UFOs. You get some people who see UFOs every single night, every single day. Yeah. Then you get people who look up at the same time and they don't see anything. They don't, no. People have connections. Some people are stronger. I think they definitely are. I do. I do. I've spoken with people who've said that they've been actually been able to communicate. They've kind of gone, right, well, you know, if if you are met there for me, flash twice or something. And it's mm. actually happened. You know, I just think this, it's changed, hasn't it? I think you've noticed yeah. as well from about 29 things. 2019, things have really ramped up so that really there's has. more paranormal experiences, more cryptid experiences, more people coming forward and looking for answers. Mm. Uh, and I don't know why, obviously, I'm, I've got a few theories and conspiracy theories and things like that, but I can't 
prove it. You know, I can't put my finger on it. But something's mm -hmm. definitely changed because the way the government speaks to us now has changed. So mm -hmm. it's all about stay in your house, you know, you stay at home, buy offline, you don't need to go to the club, we'll have a Zoom meeting. You know, it's all engineering, mm -hmm. stay at home. And I just mm -hmm. wonder why, you know, why do they need us in the houses safe? And I'm seeing dogman report after dogman report after dogman report coming in, totally. you know? Yeah. Not, not even frightening or scary attacks. Worked two cases this week, two women, don't know each other, live 20 no. minutes by the crow flies apart. She gets in touch with me just before Christmas. No. Say again, walking the dog, something in the tree line. She goes to step forward and it says, do not come in here. You do not want to see me. No. And she backed out and went. And then I've got another lady, October 2021. Okay. Walking down the back, like the path. You know when you used to get an old railway track and now they kind of pave it and you can set the okay. bike, the dogs, and she's in that kind of situation. Really poor sight. Her sight's very bad. So she's got the dog clipped on to her harness on the chest. Never and see. Said, I saw a dark movement and I presumed it was like a lad on a, on a silent scooter, she said, and he was moving so quickly that I said, stop, stop, you're going to hit me. And he did. She said he stopped immediately in front of me, about a foot away. And I can see out of my peripheral. And in my peripheral, I can see a torso that's covered in hair, very thickly muscled, doesn't smell, doesn't stink, doesn't growl at her, just looks at her, makes eye contact. Mm -hmm. She said it took two steps, covered 10 feet and was gone in the woods. Okay. So that's it wasn't... Good. Yeah, it, it wasn't there to hurt her or harm her. She felt right. that she just caught it out. No, that doesn't surprise me at all. You have to wonder about all these animals that were sort of hidden away before. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I've got a really funny yeah. cough today. I well, know, we've all got it. You don't worry about uh -huh. it. I think it's passing. I think it's going around. Mm -hmm. All these animals, all these uh, cryptids that were, or animals that were really? living on the land before towns really did expand before cities and towns expanded and they were probably living in the peripheral then you couldn't see them and they've had to go they've had to go sort of elsewhere you look at uh ashdown forest you look at um the, the highlands in scotland the lake district uh the new forest all, all those places there's loads of places where they could go and hide yeah there I is think. i i agree look at the northeast yeah. coast if you look at oh. the north coast from the tip of britain all the way to the top of um, Scotland, on yeah. each of old military installations, we have a report of a dog-like creature or a Bigfoot-like creature, always on military defence land, all the way from the old stinker of the olden days to very, yeah. very modern-day reports, mm. you know. And I know some people poo-poo them. I get that. I understand yeah. that. But I sit down with the witnesses and I, I recognise, that I see the trauma because I work with people consistently yeah. who are trying to work through a situation you know mm -hmm. i didn't know that you'd taken um big uh, job man reports i, I was aware, unaware of that under. i didn't know I'd, that i'd seen i'd seen one right. uh, dog man report it was, it was called the beast of box hill right. box hill is uh box hill is part of the surrey hills lovely yeah. place near dorking it is a beautiful hill yeah. if you're ever down here go and have a look i've been there hundreds of times so i, I did I read it. Mm -hmm. No, no. I first heard about it on one of the um, uh, Paranormal Activity podcasts uh, yeah. by Vet Fielding, and I thought, I'm not sure whether I believe this or not. <laughs> but then there was another one on one of a uh, other podcasts, and I thought, I'm going to have to read up on this. Mm -hmm. And I did a bit of checking on the internet, and it was actually in one of the newspapers. Somebody yeah. reported a, a a dog man or a beast in box hill i actually did an episode on it last year i tried to get the uh, the person who reported on it on the podcast but uh, for whatever reason they didn't want to come on which is fine yeah and yeah. they did they give a they give a pretty sort of big story about this sort of beast dog man thing that's again furry smelled a little bit and she described the eyes. Was it red or orange or yellow? I can't remember. Yeah. But Apparently, that person had lived there and hadn't seen it for the entire time that she'd lived there, 20-odd years, and then it sort of showed up. 
when all the visitors had gone away from uh, Box Hill. Mm-hmm. She sort of saw it in uh, one of the bushes or something, walking around, and then someone else said they seen the same thing. So I think these things are definitely there. And I think the reason why, as you said before, that a lot of people are coming forward with this, uh, with the paranormal stories, UFOs, ghosts, and everything, is because people like you and me mm-hmm. tell real stories. Yeah, and normal. Tell big stories and real stories from the real person. And they, that emboldens these people to think, I can tell my story as well now. Yeah. I can come forward and get, maybe get a bit of help, talk to somebody, get it off my chest. But I, th- I think I think you and I help people do that. And I think I, <laughs> in a sort of roundabout way, we've helped the paranormal come out uh, and normal- be more accepted. Yeah, we're normalising it for people. Going to blow That's your right. mind bit got some cases at box hill oh, there yeah. was somebody who was running up and down the hit you know the steps training yeah, I've been there a few times and they saw what they described as an ape-like creature that stood there and mm-hmm. watched them now box hill is named box hill because of the box plants it's, it's a very old okay. ancient land and it was grown for making furniture so that's where the name mm-hmm. comes from. there is a very famous missing person case there a young girl who was 16 Got out of a taxi cab at Box Hill. Never seen again. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah, I'll send you the, the link to it in the newspaper. Yeah. Quite a famous case. Um, never found her, never found her clothing, nothing, not, nothing like that. And it's quite close <laughs> to Dark and Deep Dean, isn't it? Yes. Right, so Dark and Deep Dean, you've got two lads, and they are urban explorers, and they want to go in the yeah. old train tunnels. Is it World War II tunnels underneath right. there? And they have decided they're going to hang out in the trees till everyone goes home, and then they're going to de- and then they're going to do a video for YouTube. Right? Um, yeah, I think I might have added that on. I don't think they were doing a, a video. I think they were there. He was there with his brother. He'd been there before. Right. And his brother wanted to go, and he said they were just waiting out for people to go. Mm. And he said sometimes you can hear a dog in the background barking. And you don't really take it on until it stops. He said, and when right. this dog stopped barking, we suddenly realised it had gone completely silent. And he said something he couldn't see, completely invisible, mm. but it was moving the bushes. It was thumping and banging and making a complete mm. racket at him, almost like a gorilla doing a bluff charge. Yeah. Pair of them. Um, and a few years later, a lady got in touch with me. And she said, I've seen you work some cases in uh, Dark and Deep Dean. Yeah. I actually was going to meet my friend. Um, she said, there's a really nice place where you can go and have like lunch and that's where I was going she said and as I'm watching the woodland Mm -hmm. she called it this incredible stomping thing she said there was something in there that I couldn't see but it was pounding yeah pounding the ground and making an awful racket and she actually ran she said I grabbed Mm -hmm. my skirt and I ran and when I got there my friend said oh my goodness what's happened to you she said and I felt a right idiot telling her but I had to she said there was something in those bushes and it was shadowing her on her walk so maybe if we combine our cases if i send you the ones that i've got there because it's an area where i mean you can keep on top of it much better than i can i'm stuck up here in the northwest of england i might even be able to get her to speak to you i'll, I'll email her when we finish talking and see if she'll have a chat with you no, that'd be good if you could yeah no i don't yeah. mind don't mind at all because yeah. it's, sometimes it's nice if an investigator can go to the area that's I've right been- either with them or without them and then go through the day again with them and, and see how they feel one thing look. that might be important uh, when there is there's an ancient burial site at dark and deep Dean, when uh, they were building the tunnels for the world world war ii uh, they actually disturbed some of that ground and it was at that point that people started reporting wolf-headed men within the tunnels that's strange Mm. It was it a huge, huge paranormal team came over from America um, and no. did a, a paranormal night there, trying to connect with these wolfmen. And they were no. telling stories of like the guides that were down there that had seen them during the war, and they were described as wolf-headed men, like they were at Alcambray, just completely covered in hair, but men with a, an Alsatian's head, German shepherd's head. I don't know what I'd do if I do that. Can you imagine that? <laughs> I'd be away. I'd run down the hill and get on the first train out of there, I think. Oh, I think so. oh, I don't, so I don't, I don't want to go back and investigate a bit more, you know what I mean? I know, I know. 
we should really leave them wanting more, shouldn't we? So I can bring you back on for part two. I but what that me to do is, if anybody's got any information out there for Andy or for me, please get in touch. Andy will have links on his episode and I'll have links on my episode. Definitely because as I say, Andy's actively looking for cases in that area because each case can give us a tiny clue to what's going on in these areas of high strangers because that's Sussex is an area of high strangers. <laughs> oh, it definitely is. It definitely is. I'm going to have to look into it more. I, I used to think that Suffolk was very, very high strangeness, but I think Sussex definitely is as well. Yeah, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to send you all my cases now so you can read them. And they might yeah. it might tie into what you're working on as well. Um, so we'll definitely be bringing everybody an update. Definitely. Yeah. But for tonight, don't you go anywhere. Thank you to everyone that's tuned in. Thank you. And we'll see you again. We definitely will. Take care. Have a good see day. You. Well, what did you think of that, ladies and gentlemen? Any comments on our special episode, please do go to www.ufosandops.com. Let me know what you think. Let us know what you think, even. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, to head over to the BBR's own website. Have a look at everything they have. They have a load of stuff that you will be interested in. They are on Twitter. Uh, they're on Instagram. They're on Facebook. They're on Amazon. They're on all the podcast uh, places. So have a look over there. But yes, have a look in the show notes for this episode and you will find their website sitting there waiting for you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a pleasure to make. I hope that you enjoyed listening to it just as much as we enjoyed making it. There will be more shows coming up very, very soon, both in collaboration and on my own. So do keep an ear out for them. And until the next time I speak to you, ladies and gentlemen, take care. Speak to you very, very soon.